Hi everyone and welcome. I thought I'd make a video today about plants and growing seeds um, because it's that time of year. Um, and I found a few things that I'd previously made and I'm gonna share with you um, about some methods of growing um, vegetables and flowers together, companion planted. Um, yeah, now's the time of year to start getting the seeds in. Um, yeah, it's still a bit cold and stuff like that. But if you want to start having early crops, then if you start doing the seeds now, February, March, then by the time it's warm, you can harden them off and get them out uh, and have some plants outside or in pots or even just on your kitchen window. So like what I've got behind me, I'm sat in a different place in my kitchen today. I fancied <laughs> sitting somewhere else, I've been in my corner. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a rainy, windy, wet, miserable day today. Um, yeah, so what better time to start thinking about seeds? So I've been ordering some. I've um, been buying myself some little organic seeds this year, making sure everything's organic. And I have quite a good selection so far, and I'm still ordering. And yeah, sweet corn, cucumber, leek. Yeah, lots of stuff. And... Yeah, just trying to think of all the things that I use a lot of in the summer, like salad, onions, you know, tomatoes, cucumbers, all the things that cost a lot of money, but you eat a lot of fruit as well, um, raspberry canes and strawberries. I know when the little ones eat them, <laughs> you know, it's great to have them. I've got some cucumelon seeds this year as well, which are amazing. They're like little tiny, um, bit like melons, like watermelons, but they look cucumber style lime flavor and they're great to pickle and they're just fruit so much you can just pick them pick them pick them pick them and never have enough um some if you haven't got an outdoor space somewhere like this if i was a bit more savvy with building i would make myself um some shelves on that window so i could have other plants sat in it or hanging down i don't know if you've seen it when people do it in mason jars when you've got a south facing window uh, anywhere in your house just make the most of it hanging plants, anything you can grow. I mean, quite a lot of the years, I've got a patio out here, uh, a big garden as well. And the garden's a nightmare, it's clay soil. We need to dig a lot of manure in it, a lot of water in and stuff. So I've experimented with doing all the veggies in pots. They dry out quick and I've experimented doing them in the garden. But there's always a lot to it. You know, I started about 10 years ago because I realized, <laughs> you know, we're so reliant on supermarkets. We don't even know what food is in season anymore. So, you know, that's what started me off it on my journey. And I think actually, yeah, it snowed. And so oh, it, the country shut down. It's about 10 years ago, maybe more actually. <laughs> um, the whole country shut down and we couldn't get food. And it just made me, you know, really wake up to the fact that I need to get on it and start growing and stuff. And I'm no expert. I have just learned trial and error as I've gone, uh, I remember the first year, just looking at it, all the books, I'm just thinking, how on earth do I do this? I don't know what to do it. I don't know what goes in when, when it comes out. It's just the most confusing thing. But like with anything, once you start doing something, you get better at it, you get your practical knowledge, you get in there and do it and learn the hard way. But sometimes my main thing was planting to stuff close to, too close together. Yeah, it, it actually, plants need quite a lot of space, which I didn't realise. So um, I'm going to show you my little booklet that I made. I actually made this. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what I was doing, really. It was kind of like a little colouring book or a little, just a little guide for people uh, on companion planting. And I came across this method when I was researching uh, what plants should grow together. And it's called the Three Sisters Method. That's actually reversed for me when I look at that. So I'm going to have to put it like this. The Three Sisters, excuse me. The Three Sisters Method of Companion Planting is the ancient Native American technique of growing corn, beans and squash together. It's the ultimate in companion planting and helps increase harvest naturally. Corn acts as a support for the climbing vines. The beans fix nitrogen into the soil for the high feeding requirements of corn and squash. The squash provides mulch and root protection. After cooperating in the garden, they form a complete protein when eaten together. So, this is obviously an ancient way of how they used to grow their crops. You wouldn't need any fertilizers or anything like that. The beans would naturally grow out the corn and they all feed into each other. Uh, and I will just read out the, uh, the method. 
This method is great for teaching children the beauty of natural harmony while providing a fast growing reward for their efforts. Not just children, adults do. <laughs> plant out in May or June when the soil is warm. Uh, these are directions to plant directly out into the ground. You can, however, if you wish, start your seedlings in and then inside or in a greenhouse and then plant them up out as per the instructions. So plant out in May, June when the soil is warm. Shape a flat top mound of soil about one foot high, two feet across at the top, slope it out towards the base, so like a mound. Place a circle of five to six corn seeds on top, water them in well. Space the mounds about three to four feet apart. Two weeks later, plant six to eight beans on the slope. One week after that, plant six to eight squash seeds in a ring around the base of the mound of, on flat ground. You can plant pumpkins, courgettes, butternut squash, uh, any type of squash plant, basically. Yeah, and there you go. So, um, yeah, hopefully that'll be a good method. Maybe pause that and uh, copy it out. I don't really know how I can share it any other way. Uh, and then going through booklet. So if you were growing beetroot, um, things to grow with it are lettuce, broccoli and cabbage, uh, onions, leeks and garlic. Uh, it adds minerals to the soil and yeah, they help feed on each other. Beans, beetroot, broccoli, cabbage and corn. Um, and how it contains bacteria that fix nitrogen into the soil and a fertilizer, a fertilizer for the other plants. Marigold or calendula is the other name for it because quite often people use the French marigold, which has got many more petals. The calendula is like a bright orange colour and it has like the flat leaves, and you can actually eat the calendula. It's really high in vitamin C, the orange leaves, so you can add them to a salad. So basically, I would say it says tomatoes, asparagus, and squash, but you can plant it anywhere in your garden and it will be a pest deterrent. So how it produces pesticides that deter nematodes and beetles. I, I have it everywhere. And if you deadhead it, let's take it off the dead heads when they're dead. And they have lots of seeds on, you keep doing that and it will just flower throughout the season and keep the seeds and then you just keep scattering them or keep them for the next year. And then you've always got a supply of the seeds that you need. Onion and garlic, uh, really good to grow around fruit trees, carrots, and all the nightshades, which are tomatoes, peppers, potatoes, um, those type of plants. Yeah, and their pungent spell um, particularly is good around carrots. Grow a set of onions for free carrots uh, because it keeps away carrot fly naturally. Yeah, that says here, repel slugs, aphids, carrot fly, and other pests. Yes, slugs, they are a battle when you grow veggies you have to be out there at night throwing them over the edge <laughs> honestly I eat everything borage is another flower okay it's like a really purpley blue flower like that shape star shape absolutely another brilliant one to grow with strawberries almost anything and cucumber repels pests and attracts honeybees it's i just have it growing throughout all my veggies in the garden always yeah, and it really does the job. Now, Russian comfrey, I've written it as this, but I think another name for it is actually, um, I think the word is cultivated. So if you buy it like that, it doesn't spread like it would uh, if you got it wild. So it's just a cultivated version. Um, and this I've got, I've dug out roots and stuck it everywhere in my garden because it can be used for so many things. Um, Hopefully it will go over all the points here. Not sure it does, but basically the roots go so deep into the ground. If you've got like really bad land, it will um, uh, it will really, really help fertilize and bring nutrients to that soil. And that's why I've got it everywhere. You can use the leaves for mulch, make compost, tea and all sorts. So it's the best plant to grow for organic gardening. Use fresh leaves as a mulch around tomatoes, peppers, aubergines, etc., to prevent weeds and provide nutrients. Plant about five or six for a small medium garden. Bees love the flowers. Soak the leaves in water for a high potash fertilizer, great for tomatoes. Composted leaves and fixed nutrients and trace elements, high in nitrogen and a compost activator. Oh, we go. Deep roots draw up nutrients and moisture to the surface. Uh, yes, 
really, really recommend getting that in your garden because you can use it for so much. And they're beautiful as well. And some other beneficial companion plants you can have in your garden um, to grow throughout, to just help with everything and pests because that is quite a disheartening thing that you find when you grow veggies is, and fruit is that it gets attacked. Everything wants to eat it. You've never seen a caterpillar in your garden before? You will if you're growing <laughs> cabbages, fruit, anything, you know, they just flock to you. So it is a constant battle. Um, so finding natural ways to um, beat them is really important. So other beneficial companion plants, yarrow, plant freely throughout the garden, repels soil nematodes, aphids, bean beetles, and many other pests. Fever few helps heal sick plants. And nasturtium, Plant with tomatoes to improve flavour, repels white flies and spider mites. And nasturtium is actually edible as well. It's like a peppery leaf. So you can eat the leaves and the flowers and it's got a really nice peppery taste. Really lovely. So that's a little booklet that I made. Um, hopefully that's helpful. Um, I'll try and find a way of actually getting that in digital form. I'll get around to doing that and um, sharing it. So other things to think about when you are growing is um, so I covered companion planting, um, but it's really important as well when we grow the seeds to plant by the moon. All farmers do it, um, and they don't they won't tell you that. But if you look into it, yeah, all farmers plant by the moon. And if you look at seed reviews, you see people say, "Oh, nothing came through, nothing came through," um, and other people are like, "Yeah, great." And it's probably because of the day they planted on. So the most uh, important thing to do is check it out and check what your moon planting days are. I am going to show you, share a screen with you. And oh, here's my in the corner there. Right, so yeah, this is a little, um, let's just move this bar down here, <laughs> it's out of the way. Um, yeah, so this is a site that I've used to buy seeds, Premier Seeds Direct. They were really, really well, good price. I think it might be UK based, but I don't know. Um, but I actually found them through Amazon and yeah, then like put their website through there because, but yeah, brilliant. So they've got this whole range of organic seeds and I've just gone through it all. And the reason it's important to get organic or heirloom, actually you can see on some of these, it says F1. Okay, so basically, if you buy seeds that aren't organic or aren't heirloom, they you can't collect the seeds. Right? So you always have to buy seeds the next year. And uh, if you want to, and obviously that this F1 here it says it's to resist the fly. So that is actually a GMO organic carrot, which I don't understand. So that's what you want to be looking out for. Don't buy any F1 seeds. That means they're GMO. You can't collect the seeds. And I just think they're like not as good, to be honest with you. You know, in this day and age, we want at least chemical crap as we possibly can get. Anyway, so this is a really great site that I found. I've actually got, as you can see, my basket's full again, but it's only like, I've got 10 items and there's like, you know, it's like 99p for a pack of seeds. Um, let's go to my basket <laughs> and have a look. Yeah, so really cheap, but you get thousands of seeds. I get some kale, some herbs some alfalfa and uh, yeah, the sprouting seeds. I don't know if you guys know about them, but you can stick them in a jar and just eat them like salad. And that's what I like to do, but I haven't bought any for ages. I'll get in the jar. Let's fall over. Come back. <laughs> and you just put your seeds in there and you water it and you just drain it out every day and you have these really high, high in vitamins, high protein. Um, it's another nice thing to do and um, yeah so it's really important to get those the, the right seeds and then I'll show you the next thing is planting by the moon so this is another UK site but it does have a place at the bottom <laughs> I don't know where to put my little screen there and let's make me a bit bigger there we go uh, down here it says you can change your time zone. Look, so if you're not in the UK, uh, you could just change it to your time zone and it will tell you. Just, oh, I can keep having to move my thing around there. 
so this is great. This is, it's got lots of different things on there uh, to show you when is a seed plant a day. Let me, so for today, it's showing that it's a good time for planting leafy vegetables. We've got a biodynamic cal calendar on here as well, and that just shows you a bit simpler. So all of these days show you that it's a good seed planting day. You, you're more likely to have your crops come through on these days. And it's specific, like it says, most, the most favorable time for sowing and planting. Some plants have specific days of sowing and planting. So next to it, it's got the flower. Uh, and that shows you that it's a good time to plant flowering crops. Uh, so like flowering herbs, which is basically all herbs, um, anything like that, or this one here, leaf. I actually had to go through and <laughs> write down in my book what exactly was a leafy vegetable what was a what's a fruit plant what's a root vegetable because obviously um we class what do we let me have this as an example the way like fruit plants sweet corn peas peppers chilies we wouldn't necessarily think that they were a fruit plant but they are classified as a fruit plant because that's we eat their fruit so yeah it's just I'm not sure how much it matters, like um, if you should stick to just doing the fruit days or plant a um, leafy veg or flowering crops. I think if it's a planting day, you probably can get away with just planting. If it's a, like here, see these days are blank. It's like, it's not, it's not a good planting day. These, these signs mean, sorry, <laughs> this sign means, the plants are developing well so and all these days mean it's a good planting day so I would just try and stick to those days maybe don't worry too much if you're not planting the right seed but yeah it really does make a difference I've done experiments before or not paid attention to it before and had whole batches of seeds that just don't come out because I haven't planted them on the right day so as you can see this was the new moon here you don't it's not necessarily a good not necessarily a good plant day on the new moon it's like a day after or something so yeah so that was important let me stop my screen share uh i wrote, wrote a few things because <laughs> i forget what we're talking about um okay yeah other things that are important when growing veg is having good compost so over since 2020 i started actually using my compost bin again so it's a bit of a pain but only for the first week to get used to using a couple of food bins so I collect all my organic waste from the house all tea bags everything basically and put that in a compost bin at the back of my garden so at the moment it's mulching down quite well there is a bit of compost at the bottom I also put grass cuttings in there um leaf cuttings little twigs and things like that and I'll maybe gardening bits just to get a bit of a mixture in there. Uh, yeah, so that's going well. Um, yeah, that's a good way for you to have free compost eventually. Uh, takes a little bit of time, you can get these plastic bins. Or people, I've known people that have just made them out of wood, you know, they've got wood lying around and just got to make sure it's covered to, to contain the heat and let it all break down. Another really important thing is saving water. I mean, all our bills are going up this year. We're all going to be feeling the pinch. Um, I know I am, and I'm feeling a little bit stressed about it. That's why I want to make this video and do something positive about it because, you know, we can, it's better than dwelling on what could go wrong. At least if I've got some seeds in, I've got some veggies in the garden, I know I can always make a soup or dig up some potatoes <laughs> or do something, have some sort of backup. Um, I really think that's important. Um, yeah, so saving water, what I have actually done for years is, I know it sounds silly, but when my little ones have a bath at night, I would save the water and by, physically by hand with a watering can, go out of my kitchen through the, and through, through the garden and just water, water the garden with all the bath water. Just because there's litres there, litres and litres, it just goes down the puck. I would much rather use that in the summer, either water in the grass or watering all the plants and the pots out there and they don't mind a bit of bubble bath no trouble at all um another way of doing it is having water butts in 
in the garden um, coming off your drain pipes. I wanted to do that, but I've got this house, it's probably 100 years old now. It's a 1920s house, and we're in the 2020s now, 2022. Um, so, yeah, it's probably 100 years old, and the drain pipe is cast iron. <laughs> so, there's no way I can get into it and, you know, cut a little hole into it like those plastic ones. So, not an option for me, but I do have buckets out in the garden when it's raining, but it's not enough. You know, having a proper water bottle too is ideal off your greenhouse, off your shed, off your wherever, whatever you've got, your roof. Uh, but yeah, like I said, just saving bath water. And actually it was a bit of fitness as well. You know, I probably have to do like 15 runs, maybe more in and out of the water again. Uh, yeah, it kept me fit, it keeps me fit. Yeah, it was all good. Um, yeah, so I think, I think I've covered everything that I wrote down, actually. Um, I'm definitely going to give that Three Sisters method a try this year. Uh, I've done it like once, but I didn't have, I didn't do it properly, I don't think. And you do need a bit of a big space. I think I need to rearrange my garden a little bit to fit it in. But it is great having fresh sweet corn. I've done it in the rows before. Uh, it's just so good. Um, I've got some potatoes as well. To put them in. Yeah, there's something, I mean, it tells you on instructions, but there's something you're supposed to do with potatoes. Is I think once you put them out and you, you let the little roots come out, like you would if you bless them in the cupboard, and when you've done that, then they're ready to put out. I think it's called chitting. Oh, not chitting. <laughs> chitting. <laughs> Chit the potatoes. Oh, what a funny word. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got to do that soon. Uh, yeah, well, I bought all these seeds and it's moon, it's good planting days, but I forgot to get the fine seed soil. That was a tongue twister. The soil for the seeds that is really fine. And I'm going to plant them. And this will be my area here. It's nice and warm and light. Hopefully my little one won't smash it up <laughs> hopefully you'd be interested in it and it would be okay yeah so i plan to just do it there take over the kitchen side for a bit let the little seedlings come through uh it's still quite chilly at the moment even though we had some sunny days um i have got like a little greenhouse rack out there but it's a bit susceptible to the wind so i just like to do everything inside and quite a lot of stuff i'll probably just do straight out in the garden um perhaps another time i will show you what is out there and what it looks like and what I've been doing at the moment. I've been out there weeding and I've only got garlic and beetroot growing out there at the moment. I don't even know if the beetroot's okay because it's just been a leftover winter. Um, yeah, so yeah, or maybe I'll show you what is going on out there and the progress. I'm going to have to ro rotate stuff around this year because you should never grow the same vegetable in the plot that was there the year, the year previous because of pests and diseases and the nutrients that get taken out of the soil. Same with the farmers, they do um, crop rotation of their fields. There's always a field resting and then they'll swap over what is growing in the, the fields that they have so that they're not, not speak, <laughs> the nutrients don't get stripped from the soil. And yeah, obviously different plants put in different uh, nutrients. Uh, yeah, I'm lucky enough to have a garden to throw in um but like i said i've done it on the patio but try different things you know if you have only got a kitchen and you're in a flat you know i have on this window here before i've had jars of herbs growing uh on my windowsill they do really well actually i prefer to grow the herbs inside especially coriander cilantro um and parsley because all the slugs eat it here, but I just, <laughs> I just have such a problem about actually getting it to grow. They seem to just cut it off at the heads as it's growing. So I always find it easier to have it in the kitchen. Yeah, so um, give it a go. If you have any questions about anything, then please ask me in the, co in the comment section. I will link uh, the websites that I shared with you. Um, hopefully I shared everything that I wanted to. Um, so yeah, I hope that's helpful and it um, inspires you to get get going with some gardening, you know, empower ourselves a little bit, you know, know that it makes you feel so proud when you eat something that you've grown, you know, even if it's just a chili or <laughs> some new potatoes in a pot, 
or you know just anything really you know time to get back to that knowledge get back to you know not how can I put this not you know not relying on just supermarkets and stuff like that getting back to nature and knowing that we have that skill and getting back to it and you know, it, it does take a lot of hard work but it's worth it it is worth it um you just get out what you put in I suppose um I'm definitely going to go for a larger scale growing this year just because I'm worried about the builds and you know we're in a position at the moment where we can barely buy food shopping often you know it's not a weekly event anymore um most of our money is going out on bills and I'm no I'm not the only one in that situation so like I said let's empower ourselves grow some food and let's share it <laughs> share it with each other I'd love to um see and hear from you guys if you actually do do it all right well thanks everyone thanks for listening and being here with me um, I really appreciate it love to you all bye